Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here. So today we're going to bring you a value stock, believe it or not, but a value stock that grew 100% since June of last year. If you want to take it from the bottom of the pandemic, over 150%. A value stock. Yes, I said it. A value stock that's currently underpriced uh, <laughs> according to all financial models. And uh, it's uh, one of the fastest growing companies according to Fortune uh, 500. Um, anyways, Fortune Magazine. I'm sorry, not Fortune 500. Fortune Magazine. Anyways, Cody brought this up to us. It's called Green Brick Partners. In fact, there is not a lot of coverage here, not a lot of sentiment. Uh, and so for somebody who always talks about technology, machine learning, sentiment analysis, uh, big data, we have run into the mothership of value stocks that is uh, maybe underappreciated at this point. Uh, not even underappreciated. It's actually trading uh, richly, but just not as rich as it should be trading, which is super interesting. It is a, uh, b a home builder, essentially, uh, but more so it's the project management piece itself and not so much the nuts and bolts. And so we'll go ahead and talk about that. Uh, yeah, again, we really wanted to come back our way to like a bunch of subscribers, but I guarantee you there's going to be no search engine here because it's just not going to perform well, boys and girls. But Cody, this is for you, so you better really, really appreciate this because literally this this video is not going to get us what we want. Except I will tell you that we are taking a full position. So uh, I'm not going to say anything cheesy like massive or load the boat or anything like what What do YouTubers say? Whatever the YouTubers say, we're not going to say that, but we're taking a full position, which is four tranches, and we're going to start building up a position probably Monday morning. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty interesting one. Um we're not fully there, but I can tell you that just based on what I've seen so far, I'm definitely willing to start uh, accumulating a position. So if you're new to this channel, we do everything in one take, which is why I was just babbling right there for no reason. Uh, but other than that, let's get into this. And uh, I think <laughs> I usually don't say this, but I think this is fairly interesting. I was interested doing the research. The crazy thing is, the market is so good right now for this that, uh, you know, if you're looking for companies that can, you know, offset that interest and, and push that uh, what they call purchasing power to the consumer, this is definitely one of those companies. So we are going to take a look at this company and uh, talk about it. So let's go. OK, this is Jim Brickman, uh, the CEO. Let's listen to what he has to say. Hi, I'm Jim Brickman, CEO of Green Brick Partners. I founded the predecessor of the company with David Einhorn and his fund Greenlight Capital in 2008. David is our chairman of the board. Our company is actively involved in every step of the land entitlement, land development, and home construction process with our building partners. We leave the day-to-day -day operating responsibilities with our builders. We are uniquely experienced to optimally master plan and develop complex, higher density residential neighborhoods under our Green Brick Communities brand. Our unique architecture, superior construction, and quality control ensures a superior product. All right, so if you didn't kind of take away what he's really saying is they are master planners, but more so than that, they're just project and program managers at the highest, most strategic levels of levels. Um, what I mean by that is what you're buying into is leadership, business acumen, uh, all those things, right? All those things that are super boring but need to be perfected. So every nuanced little uh, kind of um, optimization is going to be very important. Every little logistics uh, hiccup or snag is going to be very important. Every litigious uh, kind of error will be very important. So this is what you're buying into. So you're buying into the CEO his network of cronies, cronies is not a good word, but uh, his network of business partners and uh, his investors. So you want to look at uh, who's invested in it, uh, what companies are invested in it, and uh, why is it growing so fast uh, for such a small company. So this is a billion market cap company, um, but let's just keep going and I'll uh, kind of walk you through this. And again, this is a super interesting one. So Green Bay Partners was named uh, to Fortune's annual 100 fastest growing companies list. And it says to qualify for this list, companies must meet a rigorous set of qualifying factors and then are ranked by revenue growth, super important to us, EPS, earnings per share, and growth rate. Uh, and that's is a three-year annualized total return period for ending in June uh, 30th, 2020. And again, if you look at this chart, uh, <laughs> 
post pandemic, everybody had to sell off, right? But check this out. Uh, even if you took from the article, you said, all right, I believe this article, this article is awesome. And you bought it June 20th and you wanted some home builders in your portfolio. Uh, you would be up almost, well, you would be up a hundred percent, uh, <laughs> today. This is off of a value stock. So this is absolutely insane. Um, uh, okay. Is there more upside? Why? Well, yes, there is. Uh, according to almost every discounted cash flow that you put against it, uh, against almost every <laughs> analyst. And obviously according to the, uh, price to sales and price to uh, price to earnings. So we'll keep going into it. Um, I'm showing you the mark indicator, not to sh not for nothing, but to show you that you are at a good entry point. Uh, there's no 13s being printed for a sell-off. There's no nines being printed for tops. And again, it's starting a buy setup uh, very early here. So it's still the first or second day. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the uh, the mark indicators. Uh, this is the combo count trying to show trend exhaustion. We're only showing you this uh, because we're saying that uh, Monday will probably likely still be a very good entry. Um, yeah. So this is their kind of investor pitch deck. I'm only showing you this to, to kind of give you the company overview. Uh, but it says Green Brick Partners is a diversified. Uh, this um, actually really confused me when I first read it because um, it can mean so many different things. Um, but in this case, uh, diversified means um, they are not hyper uh, hyper specialized in any type of kind of residential home or, or kind of uh, uh, architecture model. So therefore, they've brought in their risk uh, and de-risked a lot of their uh, kind of concepts, right? And also with the four states that they're in, uh, they've uh, definitely... Um, attacked what they were, would consider the right markets. So if these are indeed the right markets, they should be just fine. And it seems to be, and again, this is why it's really important that you want to, you know, I don't, you don't typically have to audit some of this research, but this is where you would want to have a specialized understanding or call some people and make sure that their research is legit. And it likely is, uh, but you're buying into their market research. Like if their market research is not good, uh, if their thought leadership is not good, then the company kind of falls apart. And I'm going to go through why that is. Um, but that's what your bet is. That what, that's what your fundamental story is here. Um, and uh, it, it goes on. The home builder and land development company that acquires and develops land provides lots and equity or construction financing to its subsidiary team builders and affiliates. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is great. This is like Apple incentivizing um folks to build games on their platform, right? Saying, hey, you want to build some some games here? Uh, we can finance uh, your company. Uh, in fact, we'll acquire it if it's good enough. And, uh, you know, here's some uh, here's some API code and uh, et cetera, et cetera, to, to build on our platform. So this is essentially what, um, you know, this company is trying to do. Um, and here are the four states that they are in, uh, Texas, um, uh, Alabama, is it Alabama? That's Georgia. I'm sorry. What the hell? Where am I? Uh, Georgia, Florida, Colorado. Man, that would have been really embarrassing. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So companies at a glance. Uh, this is just showing uh, total revenue. Uh, obviously, uh, year over year increase. Now sitting at $976 uh, um, million dollars in, in revenue for a $1 billion market cap company. Uh, super super cheap company, uh, meaning the price is cheap. Total revenue growth, uh, last 12 months, Q1 to the last 12 months, 2021. So this is um, two years though, 50.4%. Okay, again, they keep using the word diversified. I was confused about it, but here's what they're trying to say. They're in different markets. Uh, they have different builders. Uh, so, you know, they're not exposing themselves to a risk of ruin if like, for instance, Providence Group, uh, go south or something like that, right? Uh, they offer all these types of homes. So luxury homes in uh, in uh, in South, so the Southgate company does luxury homes. And then they also do, I don't know, patio homes and single family homes over here. And you can tell by the price points, 1 million for some here, uh, <laughs> and then 290K uh, down here. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's super interesting. I, w I wonder like, <laughs> 
pretty soon here, five years from now, when we do this video, we're going to be like $1 million is a luxury home. That's a joke, especially with inflation. But anyways, this is showing ownership of uh, of the actual equity interest, though majority stake in everything here. Uh, minority stake here? No, that's still majority stake. Uh, okay. Um, so this is, again, where, what you would want to audit. You would want to ask yourself, is this map correct? And are they in the right locations or are they... Uh, trying to, you know, massage the data. But, uh, you know, if this is correct uh, and I haven't had a chance to do it yet, and uh, if I take them for the word, then this is in indeed what I think uh, you should be looking at as a real estate investor, as a big data guy anyways. Um, the other thing that I do want to show you is something that we talk about actually uh, when we talk about stocks a lot. Uh, and this is basically this uh, growth segment, so 35 to 44-year-olds are buying houses and the, this is based on 10 year trailing birth rates, right? But the population segment is expected to be over 4 million over the next 10 years. So what we're saying is right here, we are at year. So this is the contracting generation. This is expanding generation, right? Uh, so prime leverage years, expanding generation. You started expansion at 2016 and you're showing growth, but you're mid cycle right now, mid early mid cycle right you hit mid cycle about 2024 and then you kind of plateau going into 2030 and this is just volume this is numbers it's it's a game in itself and so i would suggest that you know if you want to put risk on right now i mean the next three to five years is super uh super lucrative uh, and so that's how we're gonna play it we're looking at three here um but we'll probably put a lot of leverage on uh leverage in the form of leaps so Okay, um, again, sustained growth. I'm going to go ahead and move on because there's a lot to cover here. Uh, but again, 1 billion market cap, 1.1 billion, had a little bit of retracement. PE at 9.27, you know, that beats uh, Tesla's PE of 1,000 uh, earlier this year, right? And I think they're probably at 540, something like that, uh, price to earnings. But this company is making money uh, for sure. Um, anyways, let's go on. All right. Uh, yeah. And, and just to kind of, you know, re just talk about this some more, but uh, it's trading in a PE of 6.74. And we know that's uh, not updated because PE right now is 9.27. So we're getting a little bit of a uh, premium here. Uh, not premium, uh, a little bit uh, less of a discount than we than we were getting, but uh, Ford PE as high as 9.4. But uh, the, the idea is the average PE in the industry is 11.61. Uh, this is um, simply Wall Street. They're, you know, they're showing about right would be a fair value of $24. Uh, I'm just trying to show you their assumptions. Um, so if you look at uh, Finbox, uh, this is a DCF growth exit uh, showing 87% upside here. Um, I'm going to circle it just because I want to use my pen today. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, and here's some of the um, kind of uh, metrics we like to look at when we're looking at fundamental stock, uh, fundamental analysis, PE ratio, obviously it's really good, it actually fell. So you're getting a discount right now, right meow. Revenue, uh, <laughs> almost uh, almost a billion dollars. Check mark, of course. Kagar, 27.4%. Again, that, that does match the 50% uh, uh, they were saying over those two years. Uh, so 27.4. That matches leverage free cash flow finally in the positive. Heck yeah. Uh, market cap, yeah, sure. Gross profit margin, good. Gross profit, great. Shares outstanding, no dilution, great. Uh, total assets, great. Total current liabilities, up a little bit, but I mean, it's nothing that's alarming. Um, it's totally fine. Uh, and so this almost gets the money dance except for this, but it still probably gets the money dance. But I'm just too lazy to go find the GIF and the JPEG and stuff like that or whatever it is and play it for you. But just know that this is pretty much the money dance here, boys and girls. All right. Here we go. Uh, if you want to know what Tip Ranks thinks, then here you go. It's 40% uh, <laughs> upside uh, according to these analysts. And you do have this guy. He's good. This guy, he's good. Uh, these are all sell side analysts, I think, except for I don't know what BTIG is. Carl is only okay, but he doesn't even have anything going on here, and he has a hold rating. But everybody else is uh, reiterating very recently, actually, very high recency bias, last uh, 12 to 15 days. So uh, 
I don't want to say that like this is an invisible stock or anything like that, but uh, uh, you might be very early. Uh, you might see YouTubers talking about it soon um, after me, and then you can, uh, you know, confirm your bias or whatever. All right, next. Uh, yeah, outperform. This is a 10. This is not super rare on uh, on uh, tip ranks, but it's 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 pretty rare. Um, okay, so the cool thing is insiders bought shares. Uh, hedge funds activity decreased, but I'll show you some interesting things on that that kind of uh, that kind of balance that out. Uh, new sentiment is neutral. Uh, we found that as well, which is super interesting, especially for such such a high return on equity stock. Okay, uh, here is insider trading, which um, not for nothing is very positive. The last, I mean, there was some selling back here, three sales transactions, but uh, that was out, uh, I mean, that was balanced out by five insider buys, and uh, we're still buying here in May. This is insiders buying twice here in May, so they, they're they loving themselves here. Uh, and so if it's good enough for them, probably good enough for me uh, you gotta look at the amounts too I mean the sell back here was quite substantial back here I think in January but I mean we are definitely buying a ton of stock here a 17 million share dollars worth of shares uh, four months ago uh, and then you know cumulatively this is wrong I've seen other estimates so I'm not gonna go ahead and add that up but it's it's enough it's enough to move the needle to make me convinced uh, and then here's a, yeah, it says, it says hedge funds, um, decrease their holdings by 6. million shares. But I mean, uh, reflexively, it's not that bad. There is a taper off here, but I don't know that it's enough to be alarming for me. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, and so again, we were talking about the story itself, like, um, who is backing it. So if you see some hitters, you can feel pretty good about it. So BlackRock increased their position by 20% and Vanguard increased their position by 20%. Uh, of course, Greenlight Capital with Mr. Einhorn portfolio size, 26.22% of it. Hedge fund. Um, this is just sorted by hedge funds. There's other shareholders, of course, but this I'm just showing you this. This is still very recent. So if you think you're late, uh, BlackRock literally bought in March, so you are on time. Same thing with Vanguard Group. Very, very, very on time. So you would want to also look at the macro kind of setup too for the housing market. Um, and I think, you know, based on the kind of uh, sell-off uh, in the last couple weeks, you've got a really good entry point here. Uh, so again, because we're buying into leadership, we want to look at James Brickman. I've looked them up. It's kind of hard. Uh, Southern Methodist University, uh, master's and bachelor's obviously here too, same school. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> five-star five rating, guys. Only one person rated him though. Um, you know, but there's 45, 45 jobs here. I guess Green Prick Partners has five reviews as well. But the CEO himself, great culture, recommend, et cetera, et cetera. But um, here's a current employee. It, it, he's not he's not a happy uh, about the CEO. Green Brick will pay you way above the market. Uh, the company as a whole is thriving. The con says if you want to keep morals, then turn away. If you respect, forget about it. Upper management will make you feel small any chance they get. Yeah. So, I mean, there's other reviews here um, that are great, but there is just that one review that is uh, scathing. But uh, uh, I wouldn't discount it so fast. Uh, not enough to really make a difference. So, uh, no interviews, no nothing, but I always want to see how the person talks, performs, or thinks through problems. If I can, I like to get them in situations. Uh, but when you have somebody who doesn't get in front of a camera, I like, uh, like James, um, then you got to go deep. And so you at least got to ring the bell, right? So here's him ringing the bell. So let's just listen to him. And I'm only having you listen to him because, again, you're buying into this leadership. This is who you're buying. You're buying him. Like, make no mistake, full stop, you're buying into leadership when it comes to this thing. So, um, you know, you're, you're you're buying into the whatever business uh, acumen he learned from uh you know, as uh, Southern Southern Methodist uh, University, and then uh, just kind of listen to him and see what you think. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, NASDAQ, for allowing me to speak and be part of the bell ringing today. It's a 
really an honor. And as far as our public company, it's just a, another milestone in our growth. It's just been a, a wonderful ride. Um, as you just heard, our business was started about 10 years ago, and that was with zero revenues at the bottom of a real estate depression. Uh, since that time, we've grown to be a national home building and land development company. We operate in the very best home building markets in the country. If you're wondering what those are, that's Texas, Georgia, Florida, and Colorado. So we've really uh, picked some great markets and we have some great team members building in those markets. Uh, looking back, none of this would have been possible uh, without the initial support of David Einhorn and Greenlight Capital. Later, as we went public with a great board of directors, I'd never run a public company, and I've just been given unbelievable support by David and our board of directors. We have our team builders with us today. Uh, it's a very long explanation of what team builders are. I would really invite everybody to go to our webpage, but it's basically a real partnership with our local building partners in various markets. Uh, we operate uh, with our team builders in Dallas. Uh, Center Living Homes is one of our builders. CB Jenny Homes, Normandy Homes, Southgate Homes, and Trophy Signature Homes. In Atlanta, we build under the Providence Group in basically all, pri all price points. In Georgia, we build under GHL Homes. And in Colorado Springs, we build under Challenger Homes with our 49% interest. Going forward, uh, we couldn't be more excited about the future. For our investor, we are making really good money with a very low leverage balance sheet that we're very proud of. Our backlog has grown. Yeah, so, you know, uh, <laughs> usually you've heard me kind of address CEOs when they're speaking or talking and thinking about things. And uh, I'm actually not going to be critical of any of that here because I don't need salesmanship uh, here. I don't need any of that. Uh, it's not a customer relationship uh, kind of thing. Uh, he probably likely has folks that are doing that in terms of land rights usage, land rights leasing, and, and all this other stuff. Uh, what you need him to be good at is just really thinking about the fundamentals of the company. And so, you know, when he's talking about the balance sheet here, when he's talking about all that, that's where you want to make sure that he's not tripping over his words. Um, but everything else I could care less about. Uh, yeah, it does count, sound very basic, but I mean, if it's basic and it's making money, you ask what's the moat. Uh, I don't know that you need a moat in this uh, kind of growth uh, trajectory that we have for housing. And, and, and in fact, uh, especially with the kind of, uh, again, expanding generation that we saw, that cohort, and that's one. Uh, two, we do think that there's going to be de-urbanization and sprawl. That's part of our macro trends that we're monitoring. So this is already a great play for us just based on those things. And so really, you just want to make sure that this guy has his head on straight. And I mean, he, he tied his tie right. Uh, he combed his hair. I think it's fine. All right, next. Uh, okay, usually we go through this and we kind of try to dissect uh, the network and dissect kind of uh, um, uh, sentiment as a whole. Uh, here, there's just not enough volume. If you've seen even any of the stocks that we do, there's usually it's like a, a light bulb, right? But this is just, there's just not enough. Uh, it, so it doesn't matter, which is good and bad. So like if, if this starts coming in and you start seeing folks come in, you can definitely see a surge in, in uh, stock price. The only, the great thing about this is there's not anything negative. And if it's negative, it's basically neutral, right? This is hyper negative on this side. Uh, so this is just fine here. So um, in terms of like the actual network itself this is a socio viz i'm just looking at uh you know who's talking about the stock uh and the network if i could pull anything out but it's a really uh disconnected network there's not much kind of cohesion here or clustering it's it's really a bunch of isolates uh, talking about them in their own little uh ecosystem so like cody is probably like right here right uh, <laughs> uh and and I, I don't say that to pick fun but but what i'm suggesting is you know there's actually very big upside if 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 folks can get really interested and excited about it uh, and I don't know, Kramer comes in here and puts put something down or, or, you know, somebody from CNBC, then all of a sudden this stock may shoot up to the moon. So I still think we're actually early and this is in discovery mode, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and this is again, showing consistency here again, low volume. And, you know, I usually refresh this 10 times to get a thousand tweets. Um, but you know, in the last eight days, <laughs> 
the tweets don't even go back past 283. So that's that's amazing because the stock price is moving without any sentiment. Uh, here's 90% neutral, which is crazy as well. Uh, the stocks that we look at usually aren't that neutral. So I'm actually quite impressed by that, and I'll tell you why in a second. And um, we're going to go ahead and go do the Red Cliff score just to kind of uh, show our process. But but essentially network again three uh if you're new to this channel we have a really complicated uh kind of algorithm to kind of suss out uh, our model here and honestly this was um done you know about a year and a half ago to a year ago and we've been trying to solve for tesla and this is what this category one uh layer is it's what we call a temporal excel accelerant how fast pricely price correctly reflect <laughs> reflects value anyways the point is uh this is not necessary no, uh, to the price of the stock. Uh, this is a bonus layer. So even if this was one and one, it doesn't matter. It's okay. You can just kind of uh, uh, regress that. Uh, second, category two is obviously your intrinsic value and, and Category three is kind of your perceived value looking at macro and momentum. Uh, and so fundamentals, we give it, uh, you know, a, a, a straight up five. You got the money dance. You saw that innovation. I don't know that it's any more innovative than anything else, except for it's in the right market at the right time. So great product market fit, uh, but can't give them that much credit for that. But the technicals are amazing and the macro is amazing. You've seen that. So I don't have to kind of spell that out for you in terms of where we are. Uh, you saw it, the graph that actually most represents this, and this is our limiting indicator, but the graph that most rep correctly represents this is the generational cohort that we saw, uh, the growth of the uh, 33 to 44 uh, home buying generation, right? And and you saw where it was on that, that, that graph, and it's uh, generally right about here. Uh, medium risk, high reward is what we're calling for. In terms of valuation, uh, no luck is necessary here. Hard work gets here. Valuation is uh, right around here, early early four, but the performance is definitely teetering on uh, uh, extremely good or excellent. And so this is what we are going to do, looking for a three to five year hold, mostly three because we want to get in now and kind of get out and maybe think about uh buying back in if we can see a major dip or something like that but we will see um it's investment grade we're going to go low risk low return uh, that's if you stay deleveraged um what we will be doing is we'll be buying a full position uh, but we'll be doing it in a different interesting way but a full position is essentially four tranches uh and accumulating over uh four months time so uh, one tranche is one month's uh, kind of addition to your, your savings account. So if you put $1,000 a month into your savings account over four months, that's uh, $4,000 and that's a full position. And that's how we run it here. Um, you can do it a lot of different ways. Um, you could buy, uh, uh, well, I mean, those are more complicated kind of strategies, but there's other ways to do it. But essentially what we're offering is this is how we are going to do it. And so that's how we're looking at it. Dang, I didn't want to do a fundamental value stock or anything like that, but we had accidentally uh, tripped over this one and I felt like I had to do it. And I'm going to try to do all the stocks in the Slack chat in order if I have to. But I think we'll jump around just for morale's sake. Uh, we got to do some that uh, are going to get us some search volume and some subscribers. Um, in fact, I'm going to guess right now that this gets only... 300 views max, maybe 200, 200, 250. This is going to be a low one. Nobody's going to search for this. I'm going to, I got to put clickbait on this guys, girls got to put the clickbait. Anyways, if you like this kind of thing, uh, you can find out more about us and you can get a free macro newsletter that comes out every month. In fact, uh, nine more days until we publish the next one. That macro newsletter talks about trends and how we're setting up for the trade. And so, yeah, if you want that, it's free. Go to our website, uh, redcliffresearch.com and uh sign up and we'd love to have you and so yeah thanks for watching if you watch this far and you're new first of all how did you search for this you gotta let me know because there's just no way uh but yeah and you got to the end as well let me know uh I'm just super interested if we can just get one if i could just get one then cody you get a plus one if you don't even get 100 lashings to cody in the innovation lab all right thanks for watching and we will see you tomorrow